All right guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, so this time what we're gonna be working through today is we're gonna be working through a posterior leg day. So we're gonna be working through some glutes, hamstrings, and calves. Um, so we're gonna be starting off with some deadlifts today. Um, so I usually split my leg days into two throughout the week. So I'd usually do a push pull legs, but the first uh, leg day would be quads and calves. And then second day we're doing, uh, second leg day we'll do glutes, hams, and calves. Okay, just to try and build big cows. Um, but uh, today we're, um, our leg day falls on a posterior day, so that's what we're going to be working through. So starting off with some deadlifts today, um, so we'll be working in for those, but for now um, I really hope you enjoy the video. Something similar to the push day, we're going to be explaining things as we go along, just for some tips and tricks for when you're incorporating them into your own session. But for now, enjoy the video, if you do, subscribe, hit the like button, give me a comment and share some love. We grew up a little too fast I miss the days that we chill and relax Where did the time go? It all passed Now I need to go back I had no worries but always had plans The only thing I do was take out the trash Now it's much harder to laugh Hard to get up and the work on my craft yeah. I need inspiration Don't need no validation No more medication Just try some meditating I don't need you to save me Feel like all of you hate me Everything's been so hard with all the situations lately I just need to numb the pain for a minute I just wanna run away Or vacation I don't know what else to say Now I just need to numb the <laughs> so my big my big flippers um, so these are if you don't know I have abnormally wide feet and um, so I can't wear like Adidas and like I can get away with some night shoes but I'd usually wear like Under Armour and stuff but I bought these so these are Vivo bare feet so they basically look like I'm going like deep sea diving because they're like big flippers and um, but the reason being is because they've got a nice wide toe box on them so a lot of the time it's quite funny, um, if you actually see like nearly an x-ray of the way your foot looks inside of normal shoes, like squashes your toes, that's like really really bad for your natural gait, so especially when you have wide feet like me, you always benefit from a really really wide toe box on your shoe, so it allows your foot to naturally expand, allows your toes to spread apart as you would, and it's one of those ones if you keep wearing narrow shoes um, throughout your life you're more likely to develop bunions. And problems with your um, with the bones in your feet, and um, so they're always a really good investment. Now they are a little bit expensive, but they're so worthwhile. And um, so I'm using these today because they've got a three millimeter sole, and um, we're deadlifting, so we're staying nice and close to the floor. And because they're completely flat, we've got the most stability when you're wearing big sole shoes and foamy shoes. Your ankles are more likely to be unstable, whereas these were nice and solid on the floor, so they're really beneficial for the likes of squatting and deadlifting. So that's the story behind my clown shoes. <laughs> No hope you can still go. I never answered a no, man. I still go. Go, 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 Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. To the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, for the highway. And in the driveway is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain You never hear me bitch, nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief They'll see with the negativity But I just slide right by that energy Okay, so for our deadlifts um, We were just starting off with a couple of wee warm up sets Just at 60 kilo Working through a little bit of bodyweight squats, some really good hip opening exercises that I like to do, um, sinking down under squats, but on the knees. Um, but after that, working in for four sets of 68 reps. So I used to do a lot of training for strength, but I'm sort of working through quite high numbers on my deadlifts. But I find that it's just far more prone to injury. So what I'm doing is really making the most of this off season, I'm trying to work in for more reps and sets of hypertrophy. So. 
anywhere six to twelve ish. Um, so that's what we're doing. So four sets, six to eight. So we managed to work up to a total one sixty there. I'm not gonna lie, it was tight, it was fairly tough, but we're only starting to work back into our deadlifts after prep. So hopefully gonna build them numbers up across the weeks coming. But yes, don't know what's coming next, but you'll see it in a second. <laughs> Okay guys, so next one up, what we're looking into is a barbell single leg standing calf raise. So what we're doing is I've thrown a wee um, rubber mat down the floor, so what that's going to do is it's allows to get a bit, a bit of a bigger stretch. So the ball of her foot is going to be up on top of her mat, so it allows her heel to sink in further, so we're going to get more dorsiflexion, bigger stretch up the calf, so you're increasing the range of motion basically. Um, so what we're going to be doing, and underneath the bar, we're just going to be going single leg like a flamingo, coming straight up and through, we're going 10 to 12 each leg. Um, so we're doing it single legs, just overload one side, make sure it's getting the exact same load on either side. Once we've done that, we're then jumping over onto our seated hamstring curl, and we're working through another 10 to 12 of that. I'm going to show you a wee tip and a trick in a minute for that one, just to also increase range of motion, get a bigger stretch, and make the most of the exercise. So we are going to get stuck. Living life every day, late at night, not okay, all I want. And I pray, all I need are some better days Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to do Alright guys, so when you're using your seated hamstring curl, a wee tip for this one, okay, as you might have seen me there, wondering why I was doing it. So when I'm in my seated hamstring curl and I bring my legs up into the stretch point, so rather than sitting back and holding on to my handles, what I do is I hinge forward. So I can put my hip into further flexion. What that's doing is that's going to be stretching our hamstrings, getting a bigger stretch up. So that once you're in this position, going across your concentric, you're going to be going from a maximal stretch point. It's going to make it far, far tougher. I guarantee you that the way that you're usually doing this, you're going to have to drop it. it makes the exercise far more beneficial and get far more out of that. So you can try that the next time you're working through. Another wee tip while you're doing it is a good thing is that once your hands are in underneath your legs, it means you can feel your hamstrings. It increases that mind muscle connection. Make sure that you're tightening them up. Make sure you're getting the maximum. How to get there, hmm, glad that you asked me I think it's different for everyone Some of us need work, others need fun Some of us need purpose to overcome But try to do what you love when it's said and done Cause there's so many differences in each of us Trust your gut, it can show you what you want Living life, every day More shots of these yokes <laughs> I pray, all I need are some better days Yeah, all I need are some better days Cause all I want Some camera, what camera woman of the year? <laughs> in a better day. I got the cash in the bag, stadium bag. Next one up we've got is a 45 degree hyperextension. So that's this yoke here. So normal hyperextension, we're using the 45 degree hyperextension just because it doesn't place as much stress in the lower back I find. It's very good for uh, putting all the load into your glutes and hamstrings. So the reason we're doing this is just for overall posterior chain strength. So this one's fantastic for um, hamstrings, glutes and your spinal erector. So like the likes of your lower back. So it's great for improving the likes of your deadlift. But I find it's quite good because it's nearly like an RDL. So it's an RDL without placing the stress in your lower back, so it allows you to completely isolate into the hamstrings. The best way I usually teach people to do this one is instead of thinking about lifting yourself with your back, so instead of thinking of lifting about your back up and over, what I usually tell people is imagine driving your hips into the pad in order to pull yourself up. So instead, you're trying to thrust your hips into the pad, so you're squeezing your glutes and your hamstrings at the top in order to get the most out of them rather than placing them in your lower back. So we're going to bang through a few sets of this. And three sets of ten, and then we are moving on. So, just a wee tip for when you're doing your hyper extension. Um, I didn't mention this before, but when you're doing your hyper extension, there's two ways that you can do this exercise in order to target, target either your lower back or your glutes and hamstrings. So, I find personally 
when you're working through your hyper extension, you can either have an arch back or you can have a bit of a curved slash flat back. Okay. Now, the difference between the two is when you're having an arched back, so for example, when you're coming up and arching all the way up and over, what that is doing is that's shortening your spinal erector, so it's causing them to contract, so you're targeting your lower back that little bit more. However, if you're wanting to target your glutes and hamstrings that little bit more, what we want to do is we want to try and maintain a rounded back or a bit of a, a bit more of a flat back, so, which looks like so, so either slightly curved or just a little bit flatter. Okay, what that does is that keeps your spinal erectors lengthened, a little bit more, um, a little bit less contracted, and then that means you can target your glutes and hamstrings more while your spinal erectors are relaxed. So next exercise up we're working through is a lion hamstring curl, okay? So this one specifically, we're gonna modify it a little bit more just to make it a little bit more difficult, okay? So once again, you don't need too much weight, okay? Because this will make it a hell of a lot more tough. So this is gonna be a lion asymmetric hold alternating hamstring curl. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be lying down and we're gonna be pulling both feet up to start with, okay? So you're coming up into a fully contracted position on both legs. So from here, pulling them all the way up, okay? So you're going to constantly maintain this contracted position whilst one leg is lengthening and the eccentric coming straight back up then you're going to be alternating to the other side okay so what that's going to do is that's constantly going to keep the hamstrings under load so it's going to increase our time under tension and just allow you basically to blast and destroy them in a completely different way but it's what i always say there's a million one ways to make something more difficult without having to increase the weight so it's keeping your risk of injury down whilst making the exercise more difficult and then get more benefit from it at the same time all the shit you don't do well i'm gonna make hella sure that i don't become you have no regrets yeah i'll tie up my chest i'll never forget what it's like to be in debt been stabbed in the back bed i'll show you what happens we get one from uh from behind here next that's all right turn that to games i've got these things that i can't let go watch me turn this life into something that you can never run i feel this pain you already know turn that Okay, so next one up we're working through is a wee bit of a superset again, so we're working through our abductor and our adductor, okay, so these are ones that are slightly overlooked, you know, not a lot of people do them enough in order to sort of improve their squats and their deadlifts, and to be honest, it's one of those ones that when you neglect it, you're sort of neglecting sort of smaller muscles that you may not use the same um, during certain compounds, so personally I love using the adductor, so you're pulling your knees together, um, otherwise known as a good girl exercise apparently, um, and bad girl. <laughs> But, um, so when we're here, we're working through, um, working our adductors, okay, so our muscles like our gracilis, I usually find that when I'm squatting, I usually get very, very tight in the inside of my legs, so I try to improve the strength and sort of lengthen and stretch those through this exercise, and then obviously our abductor, I'll be working our glute med quite a lot, um, just to improve our sort of glute strength, um, so that we're not getting as much pulling on our lower back, and um, that sort of way, that it's not having to compensate for things, keep nice strong glutes, improve our squats and our deadlifts, so we're working through three sets of 12 to 15 of each of these um, just as accessory movements um, and then we're moving on to some RDLs and more calves. They look dead face. <laughs> okay, guys, to finish up, what we're working through is some dumbbell RDLs. Um, so when we're doing our RDLs, I usually tend to, I prefer to use dumbbells. I just find it's far easier to keep the weight back into my heels, just because you can angle them very, very slightly to come to the outside of your leg, very, um, just that little bit more. So it means you can sink your bum back that little bit further without sort of losing balance. So I prefer dumbbells over a barbell. Personally, 
Um, so we're keeping the weight in heels, slightly bent knees, all in hips. So I always tell people, imagine your hips are on a reel, so they can only slide back and forward. So it means you can, you're not bending your knees, turn it into an actual deadlift. Okay, we're sliding the hips back, and then you're dragging the dumbbells up by pushing the hips forward, and then that'll give you the maximum contraction in your hamstrings. We're then moving on to a seated hamstring, or seated calf raise, seated calf raise. Pretty self-explanatory, once again, planting half of our foot on our plate, letting the heel drop, coming into dorsal flexion, getting the full stretch across the calf, coming back up into plantar flexion, full squeeze in the calf, so we're working through seated calf raise. So once our um, knees are bent, then we'll be hitting our soleus, which is underneath the main muscle of your calf, the one that everyone sort of looks for is the big sort of rounded shape, or soleus is in underneath that. So when you're doing your seated calf raises, what that does is that grows the muscle in underneath. So that means that it's going to push it further to the surface and actually give you bigger looking calves. So there's a wee tip when you're doing that. Seated calf raises are just as important as standing ones.